am so thankful for the women leaders in my life who have mentored me and championed me through my career and life. And one new friend and women leader who inspires me every day on her social media and through her books is the formidable Joe Saxton. Joe, welcome to our show on leadership. Hi, it's great to be here and a wonderful su subject to be with you in. I know, I can see the passion in your eyes. So let's start off because I know this is our, you know, this season six, every month we're talking about, but what is the first, well, what you would say, real issue that holds women back from leading and stepping into leadership? I think I would use two words, imposter syndrome. Ah, oh. <laughs> yes. Let's yes. think in. Yes. Imposter syndrome. That feeling like that we are a fake, that who do we think we are? Who do you think you are thinking you should be leading? Um, that you've got the talents. And isn't it arrogant that you should say you've got a vision and a dream for something? Imposter syndrome, I think, um, has a lot of broken dreams living in its house. Wow. And I'm saying yes, because I understand that, because every job that I have walked into and, and gotten, I've always suffered from imposter syndrome, like just waiting to be found out, right? Waiting yeah. to be found out that I actually don't know how to produce a show or I don't know how to write that fundraising plan. Absolutely. Mm. How do people get past that? How do women get past that? Because that's tough. That's hard. Yeah, it, and, and it is. And I think, I think you're right in terms of it coming round. It can be a bit of a loop that comes round again and again. And, but I found a couple of things that have been particularly helpful. First of all, although this isn't what you want to do, I think you have to name it. You have to call it out and say, rather than give yourselves reasons for not doing something and hiding away, you actually have to start having a conversation and saying, I feel like a bit of a fake here in your prayer life to say, God, I want to do these things, but um, I don't think I'm good enough. So that's one of the things I encourage people to do. The second is to talk to somebody else. Often, and in fact, a lot of the data shows one of the ways we get past imposter syndrome is someone telling you the truth about who you are, wow. what you've actually accomplished, what your worth, what your value, what your value is. So for us, I think there is a sense of who does God say you are? <laughs> who has God always said you were? What did, it, what did he say he would empower you to do? That's one part of it, because his power is made perfect in our in our weakness. Yes. But also with the people around us, for them to remind us of our story with God and our story and our journey to, um, to say, do you remember when you did that? Do you remember when you accomplished this? Do you remember when you had that project? And say the person then, you may not have all the skills right now. Uh, you're a lifelong learner as a leader. You may not have all the skills right now, but the person then and the God who was with you then will lead you in this oh, journey now. Good. You don't have to Keep these dreams for him. He is calling us to follow him even as we lead. That is so encouraging because a lot of times women won't lead because of the imposter syndrome. They don't lead well because of the imposter syndrome. They crumble and are always yeah. anxious and stressed yeah. out because they think they're going to get found out because of the imposter syndrome. So imagine that thousands of women around the world dealing with imposter syndrome and you're just like, wait a second, whoa. I love what you just said. You know, who are you? Who does God say you are? I think it's hugely important because the, here's the thing that that sometimes, honestly, Melinda keeps me up at night. What isn't happening because imposter syndrome had the last yeah. word? Yeah. What what um what shows aren't being produced? What songs aren't being written? What businesses aren't being launched? Churches not being started? Ministries not being birthed? Anti-human trafficking initiatives? Um, all these incredible dreams that are still buried because imposter syndrome has had a really loud voice and it's overwhelmed us. That's why it's really hugely important. We keep on working out how we can put it in its place, which is behind us. Beautiful. So if somebody says, yes, yes, Joe, I'm with you. What's the first thing they can do? They're listening to you and they're saying, I'm there, I'm with you. What can I do? I think the first thing I want, I want you to do is I want you to go to, first of all, Psalm 139, where it talks about how well God knows us. And it talks about, and it's written by a leader. It's written by a leader who had a very complicated life, very complicated story. Um, hero in some moments, bad choices yes. in other moments. Oh yes, to put it to put it nicely. But he says, I, and there's a point where he says, "I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well." And I think we start by saying that over our leadership, saying that over our calling, saying that over ourselves, over our bodies, and say, you know what, God, I'm praising you because this is how you made me for this. You wired me 
um, with these dreams and these ideas and these abilities and gifts. And I'm not going to hide it and call it humility anymore. Hmm. My first step is I'm going to let the word say what my value is, not what my fears say my value is. Wow. And I think that can translate over, Joe, to, you know, our theme today of leading yourself well and your teams well through challenging times. I think you're, you're, you're sort of identifying and pointing us to the scriptures of who God says we are and how God is going to help us through. Yeah. And, and I mean, and talk about challenging times. Oh, my goodness. And, <laughs> Yes. I mean, I think the levels of vulnerability and the levels of weariness because of the ambiguous nature of the losses that we're encountering day in, day out. And without, you know, if there was a crisis and you knew the date it would end, then maybe you could run across the finish line. But we don't know. There's so many unknowns. And so I think for me, in, in terms of leading myself uh, well in this moment is an honest vulnerability weep before God when I need to, grieve when I need to, remind myself about who he is and, um, and keep on partnering with him and saying, Lord, what does it look like to show up and serve? Yeah. Thank you, Joe Saxton. That was amazing. And I, I can't wait to hear all the rest because that was our first real issue, imposter syndrome. And then every month they're going to be bringing something that's holding us women back from stepping in to our leadership and leading and to the places that God has called us to. So thanks so much for your thoughts. Um, everybody should get your book, which I see behind you there, which is great. <laughs> great placement. And I can't wait to hang out with you next month. Thank you.